Hey there, general chemistry students. We're going to do a quick demo because um, we're talking about the mole. And you've probably Googled some of these. I hope you have. But I want to get a quick visualization for you. This is what we do for our on-ground classes. I want to do it for you as well. Um, when you have a mole of something, all right, you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of that if it's an element. Uh, but you also have a certain mass. So for example, see if I can get this. This is a mole of silicon. So I have the element silicon in this jar. Um, these are little hard kind of silverish. Sil silicon is a non-metal, but it's kind of a metalloid, so it has some characteristics of metals and some characteristics of non-metals, but we call it a non-metal. Uh, it mostly forms covalent compounds. Um, and so this is silicon, and all together, the, the sample of silicon in this jar, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of the silicon. Now, if I wanted to know how much this weighed, the mass, I'd go to my periodic table. I can't do this whole screen thing, but that's okay. Probably making you seasick. Sorry if I am. Um, and silicon's atomic mass is 28.09 on this periodic table. You should always use at least two decimal places on your molar masses. There's a periodic table on our Getting Started module that lists the molar masses to two decimal places as well as the names of all the elements. So you might want to check that out and print it off and have it handy. So 28.09 is listed here. That means that if I went and weighed the silicon in this jar, it would weigh about 28 grams, and it represents 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silicon. And I use the word atoms because this is an element. It's on the periodic table. Uh, we also see lead. In this jar, I have pieces of lead. This is my polyatomic ion list, which you should also have handy when you take a quiz or an exam. This comes from our nomenclature handout. So that's a sample of lead, this pieces of lead. Um, and in this jar, let me come about it in kind of a backwards way, all these pieces of lead together weigh, look at my periodic table, weigh about 207 grams. And since that's the atomic mass of lead, PB, on the periodic table, um, 207 grams of it is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So there are that many atoms of lead in this sample in the jar, and therefore this is a mole of lead, one mole of lead. All right. Um, I have sulfur. This one's a little harder to see. Sulfur is a yellow powder. It's a non-metal. Lead is a metal. You saw it looked metallic. Um, silicon was a metalloid, but it's a non-metal. Sulfur is a non-metal. This jar has a mole of sulfur. Sulfur is a yellowish powder. Now you notice it's sticking to the sides. It's not full of sulfur. There's only, I can't do this backwards. Um, there's only this amount, it's a small amount in the bottom of it, but it is sticking to the glass jar. You'll learn about why it's sticking to the glass jar in Chem 2. But um, there's a mole of it in here, and that means there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur. Uh, but nobody counted out those atoms. We just went into the lab and we weighed out about 32 grams of sulfur and put it in this jar. Now you'll notice that the volumes that these three samples so far, the volume that each of these takes up is different. Uh, because of the way that the atoms pack, they take up different volumes. They're all weighing different masses as well. But every single one of these jars has 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in it. That's kind of like if I had a dozen eggs and a dozen bananas, they wouldn't take up the same volume, they wouldn't weigh the same, but there's 12 in each sample. If I had a dozen elephants, it would take up a way different volume than a dozen eggs or a dozen bananas. It would weigh a way different amount than a dozen eggs and a dozen bananas, but there's still 12 of them. So a mole tells you there's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever atom I have in each of these samples. And then here's the one that you've seen recently. This is a mole of carbon. Um, this has elemental carbon. It's this little, it's a black, kind of like ground up coal. All right, carbon 
the elemental carbon kind of looks like that. And so in this jar is a mole of carbon. And here I am holding a mole of carbon. I know it's kind of hard for you to see in my hand. And I believe one of the questions you've seen recently has something to do with this. And so that's how much space a mole of carbon takes up. All right. Um, if, oh, and one more. This is a mole of zinc. If I look, oh, back to this, 12 grams. We weighed out 12 grams of carbon to put in this jar, and that's how we know there's a mole, because on the periodic table, the molar mass of carbon, the atomic mass of carbon is 12.01, 12 grams. This is zinc, and this is a mole of zinc. All right, on the periodic table, zinc has a molar mass of 65.39, so we went and weighed out about 65 grams of zinc and this is what it takes up. So again, a, different, a mole of each of these takes up a different volume. They look pretty similar, but they're not. All right. The zinc is taking up way more space than the carbon. I, there we go. There we go. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but they each have the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in them. Now, if I go to molecules, to compounds, then a mole is still the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, but now it's not of atoms anymore. It's of the formula unit or the molecule or whatever it is you're talking about. So for example, this is a mole of potassium permanganate. This is an ionic compound. You may have to look up a few polyatomic ions, but you can write the formula for potassium permanganate. It's an ionic compound. And in this jar, there is a mole of potassium permanganate. And we didn't go and count 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. They're actually formula units since it's ionic of potassium permanganate. We weighed it by looking up the molar mass of the formula, so we had to be able to write the formula first, and then we weighed out that amount. This was a pretty one. This is a mole of ammonium dichromate, and this is an ionic compound. Again, you may need to look up a couple of polyatomic ions, but we um, looked up the molar mass of ammonium dichromate. We have to be able to write the formula first, and then we went and weighed that many grams, and that means there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of ammonium dichromate in this jar. Um, I don't have an example of this, but you can do this at home. Water, H2O, covalent compound, has a molar mass of 18 grams. Well, get your balance out for lab, get your beaker out for lab, tear the beaker, and add about 18 grams of water to that beaker. Well, that means there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules, not atoms, but molecules of H2O in that beaker. We call them molecules, not atoms. H2O is not an atom. H2O is a molecule. So you can see how much space that takes up. It takes up different amounts of space depending on what it is, but a mole is a mole is a mole is a certain count. Now, it, and this is your mole of carbon again. All right, and again, I had this out in my hand a minute ago, and I'm going to have to pick it up off my desk here in a second. Um, if every single atom in the sample of carbon that I was holding in my hand a minute ago blew up to the size of a marble, you know, a marble, little bitty marble, um, those marbles would cover the entire continental United States, the lower 48 states, to a depth of at least three feet. That's a lot of atoms. It's a ton, of, it's not a ton of atoms, it's 12 grams of atoms, but if every single one of them blew up to the size of a marble, they would cover the entire United States, lower 48, to a depth of about three feet. We'd be covered in marbles. We'd have to stand up to be able to get past the marbles. And if you're shorter than three feet, you're, you're screwed, all right? Um, because that's a lot. Atoms are really, 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 really small. And the last module, module, actually in module two, um, we had an extra video on there. It was, wasn't one that I made talking about how small an atom is. And so this just kind of, again, demonstrates that. They're really small, but this is a mole of carbon atoms. Hope this helps.